Hi, I'm Chris Early. I'm the Interpretive Biologist and Education Coordinator at the Arboretum at the University of Guelph. Guelph is in Ontario, which is in Canada, and we have a great attraction here called the Gosling Wildlife Gardens. These gardens have been around for over 20 years, showing people what to do with their backyards to make them into a habitat haven for wildlife. I'm going to take you on a tour through the gardens so you can learn how to do this yourself. The Gosling Wildlife Gardens were initially funded and are continuing to be funded by the Gosling Foundation, which is where the name comes from. We don't have a whole bunch of goslings here. Lots of people think that. Um, and the Gosling Foundation has provided not only um, funding to get the garden started or to continue um, some of the different plantings or, or different maintenance that happens in the garden, they also help provide us with educational interns during the summer as well as signage. And this sign here it's showing where a house would be. So each of the five gardens that we have here are designed as a backyard and where you see these signs is showing the back of a house. So this is where the house would be and this would be what you would look at from your house if you were looking into your backyard. And the signs have uh, different, different aspects that, that are making each of the gardens special. And uh, I'm gonna show you right now what one of those aspects are for the butterfly, moth, and hummingbird garden, and that's the larval bed. So the larval bed is a part of our garden where we actually have plants that are specifically for caterpillars. So just like we want to provide water so that we can have a whole life cycle for certain aquatic insects, butterflies have a life cycle where the adults are eating the nectar that we're providing with all the blooms, but the baby butterflies, which are caterpillars, they need to eat certain leaves to grow. And so this garden is specifically for that purpose. So we have things in here such as uh, cabbages. And you can see these cabbages have a whole bunch of holes chewed in them. Um, they're being eaten by cabbage white butterflies. Uh, we also have dill, and that's for black swallowtail caterpillars. We've got violets, and violets are one of the food plants, they're the, the main food plant for fritillary butterflies. So lots of different things in this little larval bed to attract butterflies to lay their eggs on them so that the caterpillars have something to eat too. And that's an important part of any wildlife garden. When you provide wildlife habitat, there are sort of four different things that you want to focus on. One of them is food. One of them is shelter. One of them is space. And one is water. And in this garden, we provide the water by having this pond and a pond is really important, especially in a garden where you're trying to attract lots of different kinds of insects, because many insects, such as dragonflies, have an aquatic life stage. And so you want to be able to provide habitat in your backyard that, that's important for all the different life stages of different insects or amphibians or, or different other creatures that you're going to have in your backyard. This pond provides all kinds of habitat. Not only is it a drinking place, for animals. Um, living in the pond, we have tadpoles of toads uh, and leopard frogs and green frogs. We also have dragonfly nymphs and damselfly nymphs. There are water bugs. We've got water beetles. Um, lots of different things coming here. And we also design the pond so that there are sort of shallow areas to the pond so that things like butterflies can, can come and get drinks from the pond as well. They don't want to go into a deep area, they want to have a shallow area. Same thing with lots of birds bathing, they want to have a shallow area where they can bathe as opposed to having to go into deeper water. Our pond attracts lots of different frogs. Uh, you can see here we have two different kinds of frogs. The really spotted frog is the leopard frog and the other frog that, that has spots but not as big blotches like the leopard frog, this one is a green frog. And both of these species are found in the pond throughout, throughout the whole summer season here at the Gosling Wildlife Gardens. So this is a honeybee, or European honeybee. Uh, honeybees aren't native to Canada, but uh, they're very prevalent now. They're, they're definitely all over the place um, and are an important pollinator for many different plants, uh, such as this um, obedient plant. Now this honeybee, you can see it's actually getting its nectar without going into the flower. So it's actually stealing nectar without having to get the pollen. When they go on the inside, that's when they collect their pollen. 
but when they're on the outside they're not getting the pollen so they're not really helping the plant so uh, it's often considered that they're stealing from it this is a bumblebee this is a native bee um, and bumblebees are found throughout Canada uh, you can see this one's collecting nectar it actually produces honey just like honeybees but doesn't keep the honey over the winter like honeybees do Bumblebees have honey uh, in the sort of spring, summer, fall that they use in their colonies, and they often build their nests in mouse nests, old mouse nests. But only the queens overwinter, whereas in honeybees, the queen and her workers overwinter. It's not just bees that pollinate things, it's other insects such as wasps. So you can see these yellow jackets are going around to the different flowers, and they're uh, collecting nectar as well. So one of our most popular nectar sources from a butterfly standpoint, and uh, bees as well, is the butterfly bush. And this plant you can see has really, really brilliant flowers, and they attract all kinds of pollinating insects. Um, lots of different species of butterflies. We've seen all kinds of different species of butterflies um, on this plant. If you want to see what different species of insect or bird or reptile or amphibian have been seen in the Gosling Wildlife Gardens. Uh, you can find that on our website. It's, it'll be listed there. Um, but this plant is is a it's almost a must if you want to attract butterflies. It's got really nice landing platform for the butterflies to land on, and uh, they they really get a lot of nectar from the butterfly bush. This monarch is collecting nectar from the butterfly bush. And it needs to collect a lot of nectar to get lots of energy because it's got a migration flight all the way to Mexico. Food that you provide for animals, it's not necessarily just for animals that are going to live in your garden full time. It could be for animals that, that need the energy from your garden or from your backyard so that it can do a migration like this monarch is going to do. This is one of the largest of the skipper butterflies. This is called the silver spotted skipper. And you can see why it's called silver spotted because it's got that big silvery mark on its lower wing. These butterflies are common, commonly seen in the Gosling Wildlife Gardens throughout the summer. And they're kind of fun because they can be territorial. So sometimes you'll walk past a certain spot of the garden and the silver spotted skipper will actually fly at you as if it's trying to chase you out of its turf. So they've, they've got a, a toughness that uh, you don't tend to think about butterflies having. This is a day flying moth called a hummingbird moth or a clear wing moth, and you can see it looks just like a hummingbird, but it's actually an insect. Most moths come out at night, but this one comes out during the day and feeds on nectar, much like the butterflies and hummingbirds do. This is a carpenter bee. This is a very large bee that obviously likes the butterfly bush as well. These bees often cause some trouble because they will burrow into arbors and sheds and the edges of railings um, where they actually make their nests. But uh, they're beautiful bees and uh, very reluctant to sting or anything like that, um, and a nice addition to a wildlife garden. This insect isn't collecting nectar from the butterfly bush, it's just using it as a perch. This is a small dragonfly called a meadowhawk, and this one is a yellow-legged or autumn meadowhawk, and this is one of the mini predators of the garden. Um, it, it eats small flying insects, and can become quite prevalent uh, in late August and early September. When we're providing habitat in these gardens, we have non-native species and native species. We try to use as many native species as we can because we know that they're going to attract native wildlife. Um, one of the best plants that you can have near a wet area or near your pond is Joe Pieweed. And you can see these beautiful purplish flowers on it. These blooms attract a lot of different pollinators. they are pollinators which means they're collecting nectar and some of them are collecting pollen as well which means when they go from one plant to another they're going to transfer that pollen to another plant and that's how the plants reproduce so they're they're using these insects as a way of producing seeds so this is a really nice native plant called spotted jewelweed and you can see just just a beautiful beautiful flower it's tubular and hummingbirds really, really like it. And they go, you know, they're able to stick their beak in there to get the nectar source. Another name for this plant is touch me not. And that's because when you touch the seed pods, they explode and sort of spring out the seed. So I'm gonna try and see if I can touch the seed pod. We'll see if it explodes.
and you can see the little springs and it just pops open the seeds. Sometimes they, they, they fling almost a meter away from where you touch them. It's a really nice wildlife plant to have in a wildlife garden because uh, the flowers are late flowers and uh, they provide nectar for lots of things such as migrating hummingbirds. This is a morning cloak butterfly. And morning cloaks are really cool butterflies because they overwinter as adults. So a lot of butterflies, they'll spend the winter in their, in their caterpillar stage or their chrysalis stage, but this butterfly will actually crawl underneath bark as an adult and stay there over the winter, pretty well freezing solid. And then early in the spring, as soon as it warms up, it'll be able to come out and start looking for food sources. So in the gardens, there's not just pollinating insects, there's also predators that are attracted by the different insects in the gardens. And one of the predators, which is still an insect, are dragonflies. And this here, this is a female lance-tipped darner, which is a large dragonfly. You can see how pretty it is. Very, very gorgeous insect. And it, it eats lots of different flying insects in the gardens. You can just see how, how wide the wingspan is. It's got very, you can see it's trying to bite me. It's got very powerful jaws for chewing up its prey as well. But they're not harmful to humans, obviously. <laughs> <laughs>